Let's now talk about the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle is an important structure for attachment of our hind limbs and it is definitely present at the lower abdominal area. The pelvic girdle, it is also known as the hip girdle, is formed by two innominate bones which are known as the coxal bones. Each coxal bone is formed by the fusion of three individual bones, namely ilium, ischium and pubis. So, ilium, ischium and pubis are the bones of coxal bone. These form up the coxal bone as a whole. At the point of fusion of the above bones is a cavity called acetabulum. So, acetabulum is what we find here is a cavity to which the thigh bone articulate the longest bone of our body namely femur. Ilium is a short and straight bone forming the upper broadest part of coxa and prominence. So, ilium is what we can see here that is a short and straight bone we can clearly observe that and it is forming the upper and broad part of coxa and prominence. Ischium is an elongated bone running parallel to the vertebral column. It forms the medial portion of lower part of coxa. So, here we find the ischium clearly and this is an elongated structure running moreover parallel to the vertebral column. So, yes this is the line representing vertebral column and this is how the ischium is arranged. So, definitely ischium is parallel to the vertebral column and it forms medial portion of the lower part of coxa which we can clearly understand by the diagram here. Pubis is the smaller bone and form anterior portion of the lower part of coxa of hip. So, here we can see the smaller pubis bone which is an important part of the pelvic girdle in human. Obturator foramen is present as a large oval gap between the pubis and ischium. So, between the ischium and pubis we observe the obturator foramen here. So, this is the obturator foramen. The foramen forms passage for nerves and blood vessels. Yes, the nerves and blood vessels need to pass through the obturator foramen to reach different parts of the hind limbs. The two halves of the pelvic girdle meet ventral to form pubic symphysis and containing fibrous cartilage. So, at the ventral side we see that the pelvic girdle, the two lateral halves of pelvic girdle are meeting and they form pubic symphysis that is enriched with fibrous cartilaginous tissue. Let us understand the important functions of our pelvic girdle. It supports the total weight of the body from the vertebral column. Yes, here we have the vertebral column that is joined with our pelvic girdle and the entire mass is borne by it. It also protects and supports the lower organ including the urinary bladder, the reproductive organs and the developing fetus in a pregnant woman. So, in terms of function also pelvic girdle is very significant for us. In this part we are talking about the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle differs between men and women. In man the pelvis is more massive. So, here we can find the pelvic girdle of man and woman who differ in structure. In woman the pelvis is more delicate. These differences reflect the woman's role in pregnancy and delivery of children. 
So we can clearly understand the differences between girdle of the pelvis between men and women. The women pelvic girdle is designed in such a way that it can facilitate childbirth at the time of parturition, whereas in men it is not really required. So the pelvic girdle in man does not have much broader area at the center. In the next part, we will talk about the limb bones.